This episode of the Zulu Podcast is sponsored by Zulu Inc., a benefit corporation dedicated to the goal of universal access to toilets, hygiene, clean water and sanitation through the power of social enterprise. Learn more at Zulu.com. And what, what is it like trying to get uh, them to like to buy one? Because now, now you've, uh, you've taken off your inventor hat, you put on your sales hat. Um, right. What's that like? Is it an easy... Is it easy sell or is it you gotta you gotta beat to beat them up a little bit or what what's that process like? Darren, it's a crappy sale, my friend. It's a crappy sale. <laughs> Welcome to the Zulu Podcast, where we talk all things poop, toilets, and sanitation. Through insightful news, impact stories, and quirky humor, we aim to discuss and highlight the critical role toilets play in whisking poop out of our lives, the impact toilets have, or lack thereof, in the health and wellness of humanity, and what Zulu is doing to help solve the current global sanitation crisis. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Zulu Podcast. We're excited to have you listening in another week. I think I say that every week, but my excitement just doesn't dwindle <laughs> every week. Excitement level keeps doing this. It's yep. like a hockey stick. And she doesn't even have caffeine. I don't even have caffeine. I'm just pure life water. Yeah, you don't That's even, what keeps me going. You don't need <laughs> caffeine on the podcast. <laughs> Not with topics this exciting. But today, we're super excited, as usual, because we got to, Darren and I got to sit down and speak with Rob inventor of Washi, which is a very unique toilet seat solution to... Never seen anything like it. Never seen anything like it. So It's amazing. Yeah. I wonder if it was his solution to nesting. Like he was just so sick and tired of this. Yeah. Constantly actually, creating a nest. Actually, I think it did arise out of that, didn't it? It he, did. He shared that story with his... Um, he's got a young son or a daughter. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. And his, I think his son was like, we got to do something about this. And he's like, you're right. We it. do have to I do something it. about this. It. Yes. So ne- next thing movie. he knows, he's in the garage. Well, I won't spoil it, but I mean, he talks about how he's in the garage late at night up in Idaho somewhere and freezing cold making these toilet seat invention thing. But yeah, he's come a long way. I got, got a patent on it. Yeah. That's awesome. It's exciting Super news. Super cool. So we'll hear from Rob and... um but before that, though, I'm anxious. Darren was hinting earlier at some exciting poo news. So I'm, I'm really anxious to <laughs> when know is what's it in not the news. exciting. Truly. Well, you know, there's almost too much to choose from. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> like, you know, everybody's talking toilets nowadays. It's true. It's, it's great. It's not just me or us, it's <laughs> the world's talking about it. The world. It. Um, uh, well, today we're going to do a little bit, a little different. Uh, we're going to do a little debate. We we'll call okay. it uh, toilet debate. Okay. Toilet war. Pro nesting. <laughs> what do you want to call it? But uh, basically, we're going to ask um, uh, Jocelyn and Kelsey to take a side on an issue, hotly debated <laughs> among many people. <laughs> okay. You know, not necessarily, I mean, you could be Democrat, Republican, you could be, you know, man or woman, and still be on different sides of this issue. It's, it's crazy. Should have joined the debate team. So long, anyway, long uh, so we're going to test their debate skills and their, you know, knowledge in general. But Wow, I'm super the, uh, curious. <laughs> Um, you know, we're talking about toilet seats today. Mm-hmm. And so there seems to be a debate online raging in different circles, depending on where you are in the metaverse and Reddit, you know, um, which is a better toilet seat, a plastic toilet seat or a wooden toilet seat. <laughs> wooden. <laughs> and so we, uh, you need to pick a side, pick a side quick. Porcelain. Uh, porcelain. That wasn't oh, an option. No, that wasn't. Oh, I bought plastic. plastic. Oh, I said it first. <laughs> Okay, plastic wood. Oh, I have to debate wood. Okay. Okay, so we need to talk. We need to, uh, even if you don't personally feel this way, you've got to you know, put yourself in all those people that love wood toilet seats. And I know you have some experience with this, right? Because yeah, I think your, your grandfather, is, if I remember right, uh, made a wooden toilet seat or has one. Yes, all of you And have. And you spent a lot of time on, on one. So you think, I think could... I'm glad you got wood. <laughs> Although you may be, uh, you, you're pre- you seem pretty a- adamant about the plastic. Well, because I have also so. sat on a wood. <laughs> so, okay. So you, we know where you stand. Yeah. Right. Uh, but anyway, okay. So when it comes to comfort, maybe you guys got to say which is better. Go. Wood. Wood might be more comfortable because it's not as cold. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That is a big I'm plus. I'm a terrible debater. I just totally took your <laughs> 
<laughs> Kelsey wins that point. Yeah. <laughs> Super easy. <laughs> Hold on. One we're, point, we're not done. We're not one done. One point for wood. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is a common, uh, and we've got a, we'll, we'll share this article. It talks about the pros and the cons. Wait. About it. But uh, yeah, when you're sitting, it's a cold winter and you're going to yeah. sit on a toilet seat. Would, would you rather sit on a nice mahogany but also, toilet seat? Or yeah. There's the potential one? for splinters. With a wood. Yes, if uh, it's not varnished, but most should be varnished for. If you, you take know. care of it. But right? if you take I care mean, of it. Who rubs down their toilet seat after 20 years? Well, we can, uh, we're going to get I'm into sure that the as far as. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, do you really want to get into that? <laughs> How many people are. Were we just talking with Trevor offline? <laughs> off <laughs> About how many people actually wipe down their toilet seats? It's far fewer than we actually like yeah, to Unfortunately, think. yeah. Unfortunately. It's a small segment of so the So your grandfather's wooden toilet seat, was, was it, does it have splinters in it? No. No. I can remember as a young child being afraid I would get splinters, but I never did. It was okay. always- You just never found any splinters. It was always very smooth. I'm sure, that he, I'm sure that he treated it. He, he t- often, you know. Was he a woodworker? He, yes, okay. my grandpa's a woodworker. So probably took so care of it. That's actually really cool. It's like a family heirloom toilet seat. He's taken it with him everywhere he goes. Or he's made new ones. I'm not quite sure. We need to get a <laughs> photo either. of that. Yeah. I do. You know, we need to, to get it on, on the podcast. So, so he like fits it to whatever toilet is in his house at the moment and takes yeah. off the regular seat. Yep. Mm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So I don't know. We sold my grandparents home. Um, years ago after my grandma passed away. And so I don't know if he left the toilet seat that was, he must have left those toilet seats in both of the bathroom. I think both were wooden. Um, so you don't have it. Well, I mean, we have one at our family cabin. Ah, there you go. Yeah. We, we need that. We need yeah, the actual photo of it or wooden. to bring, bring it. And <laughs> bring it in physically, physically detach it and bring it. Just wear it around your neck like yeah. a flotation device. Like a flotation device. <laughs> okay, so next next up, durability. Go. Which one's wood? Wood, plastic. Man, I Durable. think wood is better <laughs> because durability. you can. Yeah, because you can you can sand it down if you need to. It's only a yeah. thin layer. It's a. Yeah, I've seen you know, a lot of slice in plastic toilet seats. Yeah. Wood doesn't break that easily. Especially yeah. for, like, for, really... for heavier heavier people. It says in this article, you know, wood is a little more Yeah, it's a little bit robust. more robust. You can choose how thick you want it to be. Mm. But a plastic one is pretty oh, man, I gotta think of some, you know. Some... So we got two, two on wood, wood's winning. Uh okay, <laughs> moisture and cleaning. cleaning. It does seem like plastic would be easier. It's not yeah. as porous, it's yeah. just like easy to wipe down. Yeah. I win that one. You win that one. <laughs> I get okay, that. Yeah, that one. <laughs> um, yeah, this article talks about, I mean, as far as cleaning, I mean, it depends on how well, you know, s- sealed the wooden toilet exactly. seat is. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, if you're not taking care of it, yeah, it's going to yeah. be a little porous. Yes. Also, the next one is cleanliness, generally speaking. Which one is cleaner? Still, I'm going to go with plastic. Yeah, again, plastic. just that, like, porous It does say nature. that, yeah, wood is a little more wood. porous. There's a little more f- texture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a little opportunity Things for little Things can get down into critters. the grooves. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that's where nesting comes in. You just nest it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm thinking like privately, like in your home or the family cabin, yeah. go with wood. Publicly, it's got to be plastic. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. could you imagine airport? So <laughs> gross. It's all made so gross. Wood. I think in, in India, they've got some wooden ones. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It's, it's really like if you're talking about, okay, how quickly can you make a toilet seat? What materials do you have available to you? So a mm. few of us have plastic available to us in a way that we can manipulate, right? Wood, I mean, you don't have to be an expert woodworker you can just to go, make yourself a wooden toilet seat. You just seat. get some two by fours and yeah. make a seat. It could be square. A square. <laughs> Okay, warmth. We talked about warmth. Like That's wood. Wood, wood wins. Wood wins. Wood wins. Uh, cost. Which ones? Again, wood. You could just go out in your backyard. Maybe no, it depends. Plastic seems. Depends if. Well, yeah. If you're buying one online, maybe plastic. No, we're but... taking a survivalist approach here, everybody. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. If so I'm out in the woods, <laughs> clearly plastic's not enough. Yeah, you're not finding a plastic <laughs> laying around. You're gonna find some wood, right? Cost. So it depends on the the. You know, if you're building out a mahogany or, yes. you know. Cost teak. efficiency, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Plastic. If it's just pine, to you. 
That's nothing special. Uh, what about uh, a soft closing feature, like when it, you slam the lid shut? What oh, makes, what, what? oh, well, what's going to make it a louder noise? More on like what is how tight the hinges are on the back, or like what's supporting the toilet lid? We always had like the little rubber the bumpers. Rubber bumpers. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it it mm. was pretty noisy just because wood is so much heavier. Yeah. You know, so it's like big smack. Especially in like a, ca- yeah. in a cabin. It's like, you know, when somebody's done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like they yeah. are done. done. <laughs> There's some emphasis on it. And the last category is appearance, which looks nicer. It depends on what it's on and where you are. Like that's, mm. you have to take into mm. consideration the context of the entire bathroom. The family uh, cabin should have a very, toilet seat. It should have That's a, a very diplomatic seat. answer. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought this was debate. No, I can't get on board with like arguing about the toilet seat. <laughs> <laughs> because wood does have a lot of redeeming qualities. Yeah. And I love the idea of like having it in a cabin because you never see that in uh, yeah. like outside of that. It's true. Yeah. Kind of goes with the motif. Yeah. Right? And yeah. it's like kind of nostalgic because it reminds me of my grandparents' house. Yeah, exactly. Do, do all grandparents have like wooden toilet seats? Is it a, they might. A, they've either got to have wooden toilet seats or the like toilet cover carpet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yes. and like yeah, the little, and the little on toilet top. rug. Oh my gosh. That yeah. Was my mother in law. Big shag. Um, and carpet. Oh. Did your grandparents also have a box of matches on the back of the toilet seat? On the back oh. of the toilet? You know what? Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely they did. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Yep. I haven't thought about that in a long time. That's so weird. I haven't thought about that forever. And for some reason that popped into my head like a few days ago. Yeah. Oh, I know why. Why? Because I had fire hazard. people painting my house oh. and they were using my bathroom. Oh. oh my gosh, guys. So stinky. Well, I don't know. I mean, they were great. They turned on the fan, but then the fan would be running for hours and hours. It's like, and they were in there all the time. I don't know if these two guys had IBS or what, but they were in there a lot. Yeah. And I was like, well, if I were my grandma, I just have a box of matches and they would just yeah, be lighting strike matches. Strike it up. <laughs> I think they could be smoking in there. They could be smoking. <laughs> but yeah, there's some, you know, very specific things about grandparent bathrooms that yeah. do remind you of very childhood. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I think I need to get me a wood. Um, you know, now that I'm a grandparent, I you need a wooden you need probably give me a wooden toilet seat house. somewhere. Her grandpa can make you one. Yep. You know, it'd be great to like, you know, try to model it after that. It'd be great. <laughs> um, okay, so good debate. Good Seriously. good job. I don't know who won. High five. We both won. You both win on the podcast. Oh, well, you guys uh, send us your emails and tell us who you thought. Think, uh, <laughs> who you thought won. Or share your own uh, strong opinions about it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I'm curious if someone I don't is. think we settled anything, but you know. I'm also mm-hmm. curious to know, because I just don't want to be alone. Like, who else's grandparents mm. and or parents have a wooden toilet? Do you have a wooden toilet seat? Yeah. Like, yes. I, Please send us your photos. Well, we need some data on that. Like, and, how popular is that? Of a choice? Well, yeah. And Could is there trend. any new construction, like post 1975? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> are there any toilet seats still? You do see like, that coming back. I mean, every once in a while, oh, to- wooden toilet seats are making a run coming I back. See, maybe. that'd be cool. You know, I'm like, and so curious now, I go to the Parade of Homes every year, you know. Okay, when am yeah. I going to see this wooden toilet seat in this modern you glamorous? You need to write a letter to one of these It doesn't have to be builders. a cabin. It doesn't have to be a cabin. Yeah, it could no. Be, you know, it could be a I modern am. mansion. Yeah. That's their special That's the future people. bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of toilet seats, okay, this is the next debate. This is toilet debate we're debating today. Um, which is dirtier, your cell phone or a toilet seat? Oh, phone. Cell phone. Okay. I voted to the phone. Yeah. That's easy. That's, uh, that's science has shown that your cell phone is 10 times dirtier than a toilet seat. Oh, that um, grosses me out. That is so gross. Wait. So I have a question. Can we yes. qualify dirty? And like, because there's poop hmm. dirty and right. then there's germ, germ dirty. Correct. Yeah. So there is, uh, they've shown that there's all the, uh, all the bacteria that live on a phone is not necessarily because we have like, um, you know, there's a, more than seventeen thousand bacteria genes that could be found on a on a on a on a phone typically, mm-hmm. but your the human skin it says are naturally covered in microbes that don't have any negative uh, health effects mm-hmm. because you know you've got your skin is a barrier yeah and as long as you're not licking your cell phone you know you're probably fine uh, they do recommend now and again to uh, not not to wash your phone, but to to use like some kind of um, 
like my, a wipe, mild, a disinfectant yeah. wipe or yeah, like a alcohol, UV light. Alcohol sanitizer. and water, just wipe it down. Yeah. It's fine. You know, don't, don't, don't lick it. <laughs> Probably fine. Uh, which for kids is hard, right? You can your phone Honestly, there, yeah. it is hard. They're I'm chewing thinking on the phone. about my kids, and they're they're well, they're they hold it so close. They're yeah. practically licking it. Yeah, I yeah. mean, <laughs> it's not like full on lollipop, but same yeah. with the microphone, right? Yeah, you remember kids, and they're just like, like lips are just like right glued yeah, to yeah. the foam. Yeah. So uh, anyway, yeah. So that's uh, not not really a debate, but you know. Yeah, but it is always sort of surprising because we think, oh, we don't like you know, how can my phone be that dirty? But mm-hmm. when you really start to think about, okay, yeah. how many things are you touching that other people have touched? Yeah. And then you're touching your yeah. phone all day. And you put it down. And it's you put so it so many down, places. So many places. Yeah. Yeah. Pick stuff Whenever up. I put it down like, yeah. at the gym. Oh, yeah. I'm always like a little bit hesitant. Yeah. Like, They've got wipes. It'll be fine. Yeah. But it's still gross. <laughs> yeah, it's still gross. Yeah, they say really any, any any virus or that, that can be found on any, any surface like door handles or yeah. tables. I mean, they'll, they'd be found on your phone. Yep. Yeah. I mean, not to say that you should put on gloves and a mask to put on your phone, but. No, but wipe down you know, your you phone wipe every, down once your phone every once in a while. <laughs> like you would wash your hands. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, as long as you're washing your hands on a regular basis, you shouldn't be worried. You yep. Know? Unless you have some immune disorder, maybe you should, you know, put it yeah. up, wash it more often. It does always surprise me when it's time to like wipe down my phone case because it's white. And, yeah. you know, when it starts to turn gray. And, oh, <laughs> oh. That is probably a good indicator, right? It's a know, good indicator. Oh, when it gets yeah. dingy. Maybe, Nature will let it, you know. When yes. It's time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, that's what I got. There's the, no, there's no other like fast. What is dirtier than a toilet seat? Oh yeah, that, you, you mentioned uh, f- like phone soap. The company, they're, I think they're in pro, they're in Utah here. They, yeah, they do an ultraviolet light. You yeah, can, you can clean your phone. You put it in there for. I used to, I used to have one. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Um, and it would have a charger in it, and you just put it in there and close the lid. Yeah, and it runs for like you know five ten minutes, and it's hmm. all, that kills anything that's on it. So yeah. that's maybe an option. I wonder. If a tooth, like between a toothbrush and a phone. Like, which is nastier? Mm. Which is dirt, quote unquote, dirtier. Dirtier. Like has more bacteria on it. Because isn't your mouth like the human bite is one of the most deadly bites in the animal kingdom. And we put those things in our mouth and like go to town. I've heard that. What? Yeah, because of all the bacteria. Really? Saw it on Animal Planet. Wow. We did talk about like brushing your teeth in a. In, in a, a to- bathroom. In a, oh. in a bathroom. Yeah, like bathroom. A, oh, back in the spray. That's right. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In fact, we did a we did a whole thing on that. We never have shown that. I think we cut it because it was so long. <laughs> it was long. We need to link but it they again. Did, you know, the, the Mythbusters, they did a whole show mm-hmm. on that. And yeah. they actually said it wasn't wasn't significant. Like yeah. it wasn't like like you should. And they, and they actually had they had, they had they had one of those high pressure flushing toilets that supposedly spray in the air. Oh, and they had the toilet, they had the toothbrushes right there and they would, they would measure. And they found that, that the, the ones right next to the toilet and the ones across the room were no. No big difference. No, no difference. Yeah. So, well, that's good. Anyway. Yeah. But still don't recommend using your toothbrush. Yeah, you don't want to clean your toilet with your toothbrush. Don't clean your toilet with your toothbrush. Unless you're done using it for yeah. as a toothbrush. Then definitely recycle it you as know, a cleaning You can use it as a cleaning thing. But, for sure. Yeah. Wow. Okay, well, I've so. learned lots, and I think it's <laughs> I think it's great. Our listeners will be well primed to listen to Rob's our interview with Rob again. He's just he's got so much like light and energy about yeah. his project as as he should. He should be proud of it. It's a really cool invention. So we hope that you enjoy. Well, Rob, welcome to the Zulu Podcast. We are so excited to have you on the show. We've kind of had lots of back and forth, but we've nailed you down. So welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Glad okay. to have you. Kelsey and Darren, yeah. thanks for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited to be on the show. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, you're a busy guy. It sounds like you're on the road a lot. Just uh, are you doing like road shows or what what are you spending your time on? I'm trying to uh, solve the dirty restroom problem one toilet seat at a time, my friend. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. But um that that uh, entails a lot of travel, a lot of road uh, trips to different destinations on projects that we have going on throughout uh, the Mountain West. Been in Denver a lot and Boise, um, so things are things are finally uh, moving for Washi. It's been a long road. No, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, super cool technology. Uh, I mean, I think it's 
I saw, I mean, I, I looked, I have not, I've not experienced one yet, but, uh, um, I, I saw how it operates and it's just like, well, yeah, why didn't, um, why didn't I think of that, man? That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> Everyone says that, right? Oh my gosh. The most simplest idea ever. You know, I came up with the product, uh, with my four-year-old son at the Salt Lake city airport. Um, you know, he was doing the potty dance. We go and stand in line. Um, a stall finally opens up and we enter the stall and the guy before us kind of had tinkled on on the seat and they're like, oh my gosh, my four-year-old is doing the potty. That's what I'm going to do. So, and I put some paper toilet seat covers on there and I lift him up on the seat and he's like kicking and he doesn't want to sit down. And he's like, what is that? You know, he doesn't know what a toilet seat cover is. So I put him down. I run to the, the sink and grab some paper towels and soap and I clean the seat down for my son so he can sit. So I went from a screaming kid to now a kid that's smiling, taking care of business. I'm like, why isn't there, have, you know, why hasn't there been any innovation to this part of the restroom? Um, mm-hmm. Everything is yeah. hands-free to eliminate germs, except the most important thing in the restroom is the, to- is the toilet seat. Um, so I decided to, to figure it out. Love it. So tell our audience, we know a little bit about Washi, but tell our audience what it is exactly that Washi does. What do you sell? What's the tech behind it? Give us a good overview. Right, right. So Washi is, we, we call it the cleaner toilet seat. Basically, you wave your hand over a sensor located on the right side of the seat. You grab some toilet paper, sanitizing solution will rise to the surface of the seat and you use the, the toilet paper to spread that uh, around the seat. So, you, you know, you know, for sure, you have peace of mind that that seat is clean um, and, and you can take care of business. So it it's one of a kind. We have, we have two utility patents issued on it. It's also the first smart toilet seat for public restroom. So it connect connects to an app and it tells uh, and informs maintenance crews that a battery is low or a cartridge is low. So, you know, we tell us we sell toilet seats However, we're in the chemical business. So mm-hmm. that our refillables every uh, you know monthly uh, recurring revenue comes in from uh, our cartridges. So that's kind of our business. Right. So once they once they've purchased and installed the seat, um, the uh, the cartridge is you know replaceable. They've purchased that through you as well. Right. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And it's, I guess it comes out and, and, and the video really does a great job as explaining, as explaining how it works and showing how it works. Um, and we'll definitely link to that, uh, to your website and your video so people can see for themselves how it works. Um, uh, maybe, so it comes out in a foam, like a kind of a foam disinfectant solution, right? Right. It's a, it's an alcohol based cleaning solution. Um, so it dries quickly. It does have a, a very organic, nice smelling scent to it. So in the Salt Palace Convention Center, where Silicon Slopes Tech Summit is, we were able to put our seats in the the lobby. And, you know, if you have 10 to 15 seats going off at one time, it eliminates the smell in the air. It's it's a really nice organic smell. Um, And we, we target women, women and children, especially mothers, because women have to sit 100% of the time. Um, and they're usually the ones that have to take children to the restroom. And I invented this for my, for my kids. So um, that is the group that we're targeting. Mm. Yeah, I just love that. I'm thinking, I've never trusted those toilet seat covers. I just, right, right. And, I and don't know. Toilet. They just <laughs> don't seem to provide enough protection. It's so right. genius. So, yeah. Well, and plus, even if you laid one down, if there's still moisture on the seat, you know, it, those, it seeps through and it's, uh, yeah. Um, right. Yeah. So my tagline on LinkedIn is, um, it's can't stop, won't stop, let's go wash you. But I always uh, put on there that toilet seat covers are absorbent. They used to be made out of wax and, and the wax ones would protect you. No, nothing could seep through. However, wax does not disintegrate like toilet paper and they started clogging pipes. So then they started making out of paper, the thinnest paper ever. So it's been a psychological thing for the last 25 years. And everybody's, you know, thought that they protect you, but they really don't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then, and then even if you, 
Yeah, just the logistics. Even if you did have, I mean, I've seen people sell like, oh, just take take it with you, a toilet paper, a cleaner, or some hand sanitizer, and all that. But that's, you know, the chances of you having that on you, and you know, at the time that you're going, it's especially if you have a dancing kid that's trying to go. It's like that's too, <laughs> it's too right. much, too too complicated to make happen. But uh, no, that's a super cool, uh, super cool technology. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. So I'm curious to know what the education component has been like for your market, because this is something completely new. And so how do you teach people how to use this? Yeah, Kelsey, it's been tough. You know, a new product launching in the restroom industry, very personal space. You know, when you walk into a stall, we have our three-step instructions on the back of, you know, the, the the stall where the, you know, the back wall of the stall and it tells, you know, people how to use it in three easy steps. We've, we've gone through seven types of instructions from, you know, a nine-year-old little girl to a 67 year old um, elderly person. And, and now we finally figured out, okay, these three steps work and they know how to use the product. However, we're, like you said, we're a new product and um, people are, when they walk into the stall, they're either like, oh my gosh, I need this. I we've needed this forever. Or they're like, what is this? I don't, I don't trust this because it's so new, right? So we feel like we're changing culture. We're just like Airbnb. When Airbnb and Uber first came out, who would have ever thought that was a great idea? Airbnb, you know, people thought, I'm never sleeping in someone else's bed. I'm never paying for some good to go to sleep in someone else's bed. It's this new culture that happened, right? We're on the same path. We have to kind of change what happens in the restroom industry, even though people are like trying to find ways to protect themselves while they're in the stall. They do, they put paper toilet seat nests. Have you seen the nests? They are, uh, they're squatting or they're doing, doing all kinds of things to protect themselves. And I, I think I came up with a really good solution to help them do that. Uh, that's, yeah. that's super cool, yeah. Um, yeah, imagine educating them on, on that. Hey, this is this is a this is a seat that has this already built in. That's that's kind of the key because because it looks like a normal toilet seat unless you uh, called that the, to their attention, right? Right. It's it's it, it is modeled after a commercial uh, U-shaped toilet seat. So just this is a regular toilet seat which dispenses an alcohol-based cleaning solution. Yeah, I think what's really neat about this is that you've hit the market at a really interesting time post-COVID, right? And so people are way more conscious of their health habits, of keeping themselves clean and protected than maybe, you know, pre-2020. Right, Um, right. Certainly I had like an aha moment, you know, like at the very start when things started to get really crazy of like how much I touched my work desk, which like hundreds of people were coming into my office every day and touching and then how much I was touching my face. And anyway, so it was a huge eye opener of like, yeah, I ought to be washing my hands more often. I ought to be more conscientious of the surfaces that I'm touching and what that could do to my health. Right. right. When COVID hit, it blessed us and it cursed us, right? COVID, my product was in the prototype stage during COVID and how many, oh my gosh, so many companies were knocking on the door. We need your product, especially the government. We need your product. We need your product. And I was only in the prototype phase. And so my manufacturers overseas also shut down for nine months. So I was in a phase where people were like, Rob, your product is perfect. You know, and I came up with this idea in 2018, right? And I started the process of trying to get patents. Um, but when COVID hit, I was like, oh, you know, I need the product, I, you know, and it didn't happen for me. It was, it was a bad time, but a great time for me to launch. Thereafter, uh, everything is kind of calmed down. However, you're right. People are still wiping down any surface. When they're in public, they are very aware that um, yeah, there are germs out there that, you know, you can take home with you. You can get sick. So... COVID did bless us, but at the same time, it it wasn't the greatest (laughs) opportunity because everything is shut down. 
Yeah. So share with us, if you don't mind, that process of, I mean, because I know just getting a product from the idea in your head to actually physically created and then also installed and, and, you know, people, people buying it. I mean, that's just a long, long road. And maybe what, how many, you said you had seven iterations of it, or did you, yeah. or I can picture you in your basement trying to figure it out. What, what, what was garage. that process like in your garage? My, garage. My, my wife at the time, and it was very cold. We were, we were living in Idaho and I was in, a, in our garage, which was really cold, drilling holes in toilet seats I brought from Home Depot. <laughs> and I was trying to invent this prototype. However, so it is taking a long time. Um, when you think about companies, um, especially new products, I mean, it takes five to 10 years, especially if you're not with a huge organization, right? A huge uh, company like Georgia Pacific or Kimberly Clark, they can come up with innovation very quickly. I'm, I'm a guy in the garage trying to drill holes and toilet seats. So in 2015, uh, I came up with the idea. That's when my, my son and I uh, went to the restroom in the airport. In 2018, I was issued my first patent. So three years of patent work, getting denied from the USPTO. When I was issued my first patent and I had put about 20 grand into it, I thought, oh no, I, I need to start doing something with this. It's not just an idea now. I have a patent. So I, I went and applied for the show Shark Tank. I made it all the way to the end and then I was cut. So in 2019, I, I quit my job and I went full speed with Washi. So 2015 is when I had the idea. 2022 is when we're finally getting momentum. So it's been from the wow. idea seven years. That's awesome. Well, congratulations for putting in the hard work. And yeah, and yeah, obviously you've got a you've got some traction. You've got some. Uh, I saw your website. You got you got it in a number of local um, establishments. Uh, and what, what is it like trying to get uh, them to like to buy one? Because now, now you've uh, you've taken off your inventor hat, you put on your sales hat. Um, right. What's that like? Is it an easy is it an easy sell, or is it you gotta <laughs> you gotta beat to beat them up a little bit, or what? What's that process like? Darren, it's a crappy sale, my friend. It's a crappy sale. <laughs> but um, okay, so so the last decade of my life, I've been working in government. I was an elected official in the state of Idaho. And then I, I decided to become an inventor, right? And so I became this inventor and then I got my first pen. And then I decided, oh my gosh, I need to know how to run a business, right? And go into entrepreneur mode. Um, and so for me, you know, I've always been, I've been in politics. I know how to network. I know how to rub, you know, elbows, shoulders with people, but the sales, and, you know, it's something that I've never done in my life and something that I had to read up on and, and figure out. And it, it's definitely been hard. Uh, we've gone over these humps where, you know, it's, we're a two-man company. We're growing. We've been doing everything myself. I do, you know, from marketing to installing toilet seats to sales. I mean, you know how the game works. When you're a young company like us, you have to do everything. So it's it's been tough. Value has been uh, how we have been selling our product. Value to airports, to stadiums, to hospitals, and to gas stations, especially because they have they have written um, or they have done completed studies on how restrooms increase, oh, cleaner restrooms, sorry, increase revenue for their businesses. So think about a gas station, right? When you're on the road, especially in Utah, you're probably looking for a Maverick. Maverick has the best, you know, the cleanest restrooms, right? And, and so if you're always looking for a Maverick, they win because you probably are gonna go buy some snacks for you and your family, and you're gonna fill up on gas. So cleaner restrooms equal increased revenue. So we've been targeting five industries, five high traffic industries that uh, Washi brings tons of value to. So um, manufacturing has been, been one of the hurdles for us because there's so many airports, so many gas stations, and we have a ton, 
ton of people knocking on our door. We our manufacturing isn't the best. We have to ramp quickly. We have to uh, get things from overseas, you know, now to the U.S. So that's kind of been the hurdle. It hasn't been convincing people to buy our product. So we've been kind got of it. Yeah. yeah. So you've got. I'm sure you got supply chain issues or getting that delivered as you manufacture it in, in uh, where, where do you, where is it built? Uh, where are they created? So the best, every dispenser that you see, or most dispensers you see are made in China. They are okay. like the experts at dispenser making. And so I have half of it built in China, half of it done in the U S um, manufacturing has, has it overseas has, the prices have gone so high now, especially shipping port to port. So pre-COVID, it used to co- uh, cost me $7 a unit to sh- ship port to port. It is now $42 a unit. To wow. ship. Holy yeah. cow. It, it, yeah, it's changed wow, everything. That's wild. Wow. But, but you but you're going to go back to your, you're going to go back to your garage and make them yourself. <laughs> yeah. Home, Home Depot, here I come. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah so it's been it's been tough but you know what we have figured it out we have figured out how to get around those hurdles how to uh make sure that we can get our product out so well and the great thing is that there is there is demand for it right as soon as people hear about your idea they're like i need that like i'm thinking of my maverick down the street which is the clean maverick i would choose to go to and i'm like i still want it there i need it there like right. I want that. And so it's a matter of, yeah, spreading the word and letting people know that this is available and that like, it's a necessity. This is the future of public restrooms. Um, Zulu, Darren will be going, but Zulu is the, one of the co-sponsors for the world toilet summit in Nigeria this year. So the theme, awesome. yeah, is innovation and sanitation and technologies for economic development. Right. And so this washi product really fits in line with that where it's like, yeah, okay, do you want to see your economy grow? Do you want to see your sales grow? Do you want to see a market explode that maybe you haven't been able to tap into before? Like that can happen because of clean restrooms. That can happen because of a clean toilet seat. Um, And you'll have to tell me, you know, if my brain's on the right track, but typically our experience here at Zulu has been trying to educate not just consumers but retailers and such that the toilet is like their most valuable commodity right it's right. it's something to invest in oh yeah your brain is on the on the right track you when you go pick out a home one of the most important things is the kitchen right and if you if you're buying a home and then how many restrooms are there and, and how big are the restrooms right to people to regular consumers, that's one thing that they they look for when they go to hotels, when the tourism, when they're looking for a place, you know, to to have their convention. What are the bathrooms like? Or you know, what is what is the food like? So it's up there, right? It's up number one, number two priority when uh, when you're dealing with you know uh, economic development, right? So I was born and raised in New Zealand. I came to the States when I was 12 years old. So this, this uh, wiping of toilet seats, this kind of sanitizing of toilet seats, it is already done internationally, just not done in the U.S. So U.S. is the only place in, in some parts of Canada that use paper toilet seat covers. The rest of the world, it's, it's unknown to. Um, so Australia, New Zealand, uh, parts of Europe, uh, Brazil, yeah. Canada, those places are reaching out to us and saying, when are you going internationally? So mm-hmm. you're, you're right on target. Yeah, we were, we were in uh, Europe recently, and I did see in some of the public toilet stalls, the, uh, it wasn't on the seat at all, but it was a uh, little right. right next to the toilet paper dispenser. There was a little, dis- a little uh, dispenser. Spencer. And at first I thought I wasn't really sure what it was. You know, I was like, no, I'm American. I've got my, what is this thing? Is this a hand sanitizer? But then I read closely that, no, this is to, this is to wipe down the toilet seat, right. uh, which kind of made sense. I'm glad I, I read it. I was thinking maybe it's, maybe it's uh, to wipe my bum with. I don't know. <laughs> but that might, 
Yeah, I, I'm I'm glad I read it because that would burn, right? Um, right, right. But uh, as far as having it built into the seat, though, is uh, super innovative because it's less. Uh, it's just you know, and, and you don't have to put it on the toilet paper. I mean, it's just it's already on the seat, mm. and you just wipe it off. It's super convenient, uh, and um, and the fact that you mesh the technology of using an app to because that was the other thing. I think I, there was a few times where. Uh, uh, like the dis- like, and it happens all the time where the soap dispenser is is empty, or you know, how do you know to replace it? But the fact that you've meshed that technology to notify the maintenance crew that hey, you need to you know re- reinstall a new cartridge and and uh, take care of it. That's that's super innovative. Yeah. So around the world, people are already doing this this motion of you know grabbing soap you know, trying to sanitize the seat, uh, very conscious of uh, germs and, and things in the restroom. Um, so I'm just trying to bring that new culture into the U.S. market. Well, admire your courage to do so because Americans are not quick to change in the toilet <laughs> space. Right. We uh, unfortunately are leagues behind many of our international friends, that's for sure. Right. Um, I had just one more thought that I wanted to share or congratulate you on, which was, yeah, the technology of notifying sanitation workers. I was just at the park with my little girl and uh, one of the city sanitation workers came by to take care of the public restrooms. And um, and I think he was taking trash out and things like that. And I just thought, one, is so grateful for the work that he does, but two... Yeah, that work's been needed to be done for a while. I wonder how long, you know, is it just on some rotation with my city? Is is it when somebody gets, you know, it's bad enough, somebody manually has to call the city and request a cleanup? Like, what's that process like? And you eliminate that middleman and just make it automatic, which right. is, again, what the industry really needs, um, just in terms of keeping things clean but also to improve workflow, to improve efficiency, to reduce costs with employment and things like that. So it really is uh, not just a genius product, but really a service that you're offering to industries right. worldwide. That's super cool. So, so Kelsey, the future of restrooms will be smart, right? When you walk in, nothing will ever be out. Soap will never be out. Air fresheners, paper towels, toilet paper, everything would be smart and would notify maintenance. And they don't have to physically check anymore, right? They don't have to go into 20 restrooms and say, oh, is the soap empty? Okay, is the soap empty, right? They look on their app and they and, and all the data is there and it tells them restroom number seven is out. We need to go to restroom number seven. And that's all we're going to do today because everything is good, right? or restroom number seven, nine, and 20. I'm not gonna go to 20 restrooms today. I'm just gonna go to three. Saves time, saves money, and it's more efficient. So that technology of smart restrooms is gonna be the future. Um, I don't know how fast the US is gonna pick up on it, but it's gonna be the future. No, I think it's cool that you're on the, you're on the forefront of that. And uh, you know somebody's gotta do it, right? You might as well do it, right? Cause you're, you're right there making it happen. Um, well, what do you, what do you see for the future of Washi? I mean, are you targeting, uh, sounds like you, I mean, I guess anywhere that has a toilet, right. Uh, <laughs> is your market, which is, which is a lot of toilets. Uh, right. uh, seems like we saw some statistic, uh, we should probably look that up, count how many toilets there are in the, you know, in the United States, but I mean, oh, and no, no, maybe, well, yeah, and it sounds like you're also, I mean, you're focused mainly on the United States currently, right. But it, obviously it's a product that has worldwide application uh, as well. Right, right. We are focused on high traffic restrooms where the public is at, um, you know, Monday through Sunday because we sell a chemical. So that's our business model. We, um, you know, a restaurant might have 20 people use the restroom that day. However, an airport might have a million people use the restroom that, that month, right? Dallas-Fort Worth Airport has 82 million passengers a year. They have over a thousand toilet seats in that um, in that facility, and we've met with them a billion dollar annual budget. So they they have to keep their restrooms clean. They have tons of people to to you know take care of. So we're looking for high traffic restrooms. Um, 
there's a, about 140 million uh, uh, homes in America. So the next step for Washi is, is to bring a residential version out uh, with different features. And so the market is this huge. Every single building has to have yeah. a, a restroom, multiple restrooms. So we, we are focusing on high traffic restrooms. Uh, international will come soon. However, <clears throat> I've, I found out that through Washi, I like that I've become this inventor and creator. So now I have all these ideas that I need to invent yeah. and create. And, uh, and so the next step is, is coming up with more ideas, inventing more uh, innovation. Uh, you know, I think that's what I, I found. I found out, you know, my parents always ask me, what are you going to be when you grow up? I never knew I was going to be an inventor. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, that's super cool. No, that's great. Yeah, the market is big. Uh who's your who's your biggest customer so far and uh who's your who's your dream customer? Let's maybe answer those two questions. Yeah, so we have done very well uh, in the last year with event spaces. Uh, we're in Salt Lake Salt Lake Palace, we're in Vivin Arena, we're in uh Boise Center, the biggest convention center in Boise. Uh, Mount America Expo Center. So we've done very well with convention space. We're now targeting the airport space and restroom space. So I, I can't say now, but we have some big deals uh, ahead. You'll probably see it on LinkedIn uh, when I announce it. But um, we have some very big uh, partnerships coming up with airports and gas stations. Very cool. Oh, nice. That's super exciting. Well, Rob, yeah. Thank you for taking the time. I know you're a busy guy. So thank you for being here on the podcast and informing us a little bit more about what Washi is and the future of public sanitation. We're excited for that future. That's for sure. Hey guys, thanks for having me on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, hey. well, we'll be in touch. Okay. Hope you have a great rest of your day. We'll see you, Rob. Bye. Thanks, Rob. Okay, Rob at Washi. Yeah, that guy's going places. That guy's going places. Yeah, I was so surprised at just like how much, um, what's the word in English? Uh, That's okay, say in Spanish. Like enthusiasm, animo. En emocionada. <laughs> he was really emocionado. Like just excitement, enthusiasm yeah. that he had for it. Um, and that, I mean, it's, it really is just a big indicator yeah. of how far he has already come. I mean, I think he's two-ish years into... He's already got it at a, at, a, at a couple of universities, at some yeah. restaurants. He's working on some air, some airports, some airports. Uh, installing it in an airport. I think that's the, the airport seems like the obvious. Yeah, yeah. Like it seems like that's, that, that's going to be a slam dunk. That's yeah. going to put him on the map. For real. I mean, like if you're that person at an airport making those decisions, that's sold immediately mm -hmm. just at the concept yeah. of mm -hmm. it. Right. Especially post COVID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't need more like sanitation scares. And I think that there's a lot of industries that are sort of waking up to how much that really matters to people. Um, I still see folks, you know, here in our conservative Provo, Utah, who are walking around with masks on. So you can tell it's still in the, you know, it's still in the public's eye, this mm -hmm. concern for, mm -hmm. for poop, for poop, germs, germs, <laughs> poop germs. Yeah. <laughs> Passing around disease, keeping True. themselves safe, keeping around their family safe. And this just eliminates that. Yeah, it's. It, I think it's an ingenious solution. Yeah. I, I want one. I want one too. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I think I'll get one in my house. You know, just like No, for real. My, like, you know, there's a chore you always detest. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if somebody else could do this chore, I just hate cleaning the bathroom. I have a confession. What's your confession? You I, I actually enjoy it. It's like, yeah. I, my, that's my job around the house. I'm like, oh, toilets. Kind of cleaning them, you know, yeah. for fun. I, I have a theory as to why. <laughs> Can I guess why? Because I don't hate it. I hate it. But I, I love it. the immediate satisfaction of having it be clean. Like you yeah, can clean it in sure. two to three minutes and then it just looks so yeah. nice. And you know, it's inviting, you sit right? Down, it's inviting because now like you're like, I want to be the pure. first one to use that because yes. it's like, bing. Yes, exactly. Oh man. I think the opposite. I'm like, I'm never cleaning that again. I'm never using it again. <laughs> it's going to stay clean forever. Well, if you have a we have a wooden toilet seat, you'd have to be on it a little more often. I was just, so I was just gonna say, I we should ask Rob to do this with a wooden seat. Yes. Oh, Create a washi yeah. wooden seat. Yes. And that would look so nice and classy because the design is already so chic. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's the modern 
wooden toilet seat design I want to see in the Parade of Homes That's what year. you sell to Parade of Homes. Yes. yes. I think that's a really But you got to you got to make it kind of consistent with the 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 motif, right? Yeah. Like you'd have instead of a little automatic dispenser, you just have a little bar of soap on the back of the seat and just cuz it's, kind of, <laughs> it's kind of old fashioned, you know, you just grab that soap and you just make it real slippery. You know? You just with a little with a little old fashioned rag right there, you just you know, it's kind of like washy, washy of, of the previous century. You know, just, you know, I don't know. I'm just, wow. that'd probably be a bad idea. But nobody, L- lots of ideas, Rob. Lots yeah. of ideas, All Rob. Free. Rob, if you They're make yours. a million on that, just, you know, remember us. Here at oh, we love it. We hope that you enjoyed it as well. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Zulu Podcast. Follow us on social media at our links in the show notes below. To learn more, visit our website, Zulu.org. If you liked the podcast, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. For even more Zulu fun, send us an email with your toilet stories to podcast at Zulu.com for a chance to be featured on the podcast. This episode of the Zulu Podcast is sponsored by Zulu Inc., a benefit corporation dedicated to the goal of universal access to toilets, hygiene, clean water and sanitation through the power of social enterprise. Learn more at Zulu.com.